throughout the Dominion are busily preparing girls for adult life. As we live in an age of personal effort toward independence, few girls will wish to remain at home until the wedding march ushers them into a home of their own, so that upon leaving school, they will be faced with a choice. They will have a wide variety of occupations from which to choose. But to only a few of these can the term career be applied. For a career is a way of life that is chosen with care and that carries within itself the rewards for the study and preparation needed to succeed. Of the careers being made available to girls today, there is none more congenial, more satisfying than that of the school dental nurse. In a country as young and as underpopulated as ours, children are our greatest asset, and anyone helping to care for them is performing the greatest service to the community. take me ages to make up my mind, especially as some of the girls were going into offices and wouldn't have any more studying to do. But there was more to it than that. Ever since I was a child, I'd associated school clinics with gentleness and cleanliness. Those nurses had made an impression on me, as they had on all of us. It would be hard to say what caused me to decide on becoming a dental nurse. Perhaps it was those childhood impressions. The uniform might have had something to do with it, or the medallion I knew I would receive when I graduated. Or it may have been the thought that I would have children in my care. Whatever it was, I knew I was choosing a career, something that I could stay with as long as I wanted to, with no job hunting to worry about and no one to order me round. When the formalities of application had been complied with and I'd been accepted, things really began to happen. In no time at all, it seemed, I'd left the old homestead and was in the hostel that was to be my home during my two-year course. Now, I don't think I ever liked the word hostel. Certainly, Mother didn't at all like the idea of my living in one. She and Father had quite an argument about it. As it turned out, they needn't have worried their heads over it. The first day was eventful, of course. What was settling in and getting to know the other girls. They'd come from all parts of New Zealand, and most of them were terribly keen to be friendly. I believe I realized there and then how much their friendship would mean to me in later years. I may have been lucky, but my roommate turned out to be the kind of girl I would have chosen as a roommate. While I unpacked my things and laid out the pictures of my family and my boyfriends, we talked about all the things girls talk about when they first meet. By the time the day was over and we'd sampled the hostel's comforts, most of us were in a mood to write home a most favorable report. That night, I lay in bed thinking of the two years of study stretching out into the future. It was like going to one of those exclusive boarding schools you read about, only I was being paid to be here. Of one thing I was sure. I need never be lonely. There was a good deal of rushing about in the corridors the next morning, for this was to be the day. When I look back on that first day at the clinic, 
I can't help wondering why we were so nervous about it. From the very start, the matron went out of her way to make us feel at home. And so that we would not be conspicuous amongst all those other girls in uniform, we too were issued with eyes. And if I had any doubt in my mind as to how I would look in one, the mirror soon settled that, especially when we girls had worked on it. All the time that we were being introduced to the routine of life at the clinic, we were conscious of the seniors. There was something about a senior, and whatever it was, that was what we wanted to be. It didn't take us long to find out why there was this difference. The matron impressed upon us the importance of remembering that we were embarking on a career and not just taking a job. The school dental service was a national institution which had developed a high standard of conduct and efficiency. And for the sake of all those in the service and the children being treated, it was our duty to keep that standard high. She spoke of loyalty and discipline and personal conduct. She said that these qualities and the knowledge we would acquire would earn us the love of the children in our care as well as the respect and affection of the community in which we lived and worked. It all made me realize that there was something really special about being a school dental nurse. And I'm sure our parents would have felt a lot better about our being away from home had they heard her. Our first six months were mainly devoted to lectures from dental surgeon instructors to learning the importance of hygiene and sterilization, as well as how to use our hands and eyes. We helped the seniors with the children, and we did our allotted share of canteen work. It was during that first six months that we had two weeks of holiday which gave me a chance to go home and tell the family all about it. That was in May. We had another two weeks in August, which counting Christmas end of term would add up to about eight weeks a year. By the time the first year was over, I'd managed to put in a lot of work. And when I came back in January, I was ready for the final year. For now, I was a senior. While juniors and intermediates practiced on dummy jaws, listened to lectures, and generally learned the things I'd had to, I, as a senior, was now ready to do actual dental treatment, as well as acquire the knowledge needed to make me a public health teacher, able to run a dental clinic alone and efficiently. For that is the aim of most girls taking the course, to be in charge of a school clinic. Although we worked hard, we also managed to have a lot of fun. For those of us who have never been in a large city, Wellington was a source of much enjoyment. But I think we all agreed that it was at the hostel that we really had a good time amongst ourselves. After being there two years, I had grown accustomed to all the things the Wellington Clinic stood for. The children, the brightness and cleanliness, the people there who were my friends. The great day drew near at last, and very excited we were. Graduation 
is always attended by some important personage, as well as the staff and visitors. After the speeches came the part we'd been waiting for. And I can tell you, it was a proud moment for me when my name was called to receive the medallion and the certificate, which were my emblems of success. On my way to take up my appointment, I broke my journey to see an old school friend of mine in Auckland. She'd written me to say she'd decided to join the dental service after trying office work. She was living at the dental school hostel. The weather was perfect, and there was nothing wrong with the way I was made welcome. After being shown round, I had tea in the hostel gardens with the others, and we indulged in a good old heart-to-heart -heart talk. My friend made it abundantly clear that she was enjoying every moment of her new life at the Auckland Training School. We both agreed that the dental service was proving even more attractive than most. We had wanted a career, she and I, something that offered dignity and satisfaction, where we wouldn't be just cog in a wheel. I found it here. I don't just fill a lot of teeth for a lot of other people's children. I'm a teacher and a guide, a friend. For all these little people are my friends and their parents too. And I found out that being a school den nurse isn't only a career, it is a way of love.